In this example, we'll leverage both matrix arithmetic and dot arithmetic to solve a seemingly simple problem in a surprisingly elegant way. The speed of water flowing down a rectangular channel is governed by Manning's equation, which is a function of the channel's width, the height of the water in the channel, the slope of the channel relative to the ground, and its roughness. Suppose we have a channel and we want to see how the speed changes if we change the height of the water and the slope. We want to test water heights ranging from 0.1 meters to 1 meter in 0.1 meter increments at each of the three slopes, so we'll need to compute 30 total velocities. Although it may seem like you need to write some complicated code to compute all of them, it can actually be done in one fell swoop. First, let's create the h and s vectors as specified in part a. I divided the h and s vectors by 10 and 1000 respectively, just so I don't have to type in a decimal in every entry. Just a little time-saving trick. Part b wants us to compute the velocity in a single statement. Before we code, let's think this through. We know that h and s are both vectors. h is 1 by 10, and s is 1 by 3. Because they're different sizes, we need to be careful about when we use matrix arithmetic and when we use dot arithmetic. If we look at this term right here, we can compute this easily because n is a scalar. We don't need to use dot arithmetic to compute the square root s over n term in MATLAB. The output of the square root s divided by n term will be a 1 by 3 vector since we're just scaling the elements of s. Let's look at this parenthetical term. When we write the parenthetical term in MATLAB, we need to use dot division and dot exponentiation. The dot division is necessary because both the numerator and denominator of the fraction contain h, so we are dividing two vectors element by element. We need to use dot exponentiation because we are exponentiating each element in the vector produced by the fraction. When all is said and done, this entire parenthetical term will give us a 1 by 10 vector which is the same size as h. Hopefully this is not surprising. So we have a 1 by 3 vector and a 1 by 10 vector. We cannot dot multiply these two terms because dot multiplication requires both operands to be the same size. We also cannot use matrix multiplication because the inner dimensions have to match. Each vector resulting from these terms will have one row, so if we transpose the 1 by 3 vector resulting from this operation, the new dimensions will be 3 by 1. We can then use matrix multiplication because the transposed vector will be 3 by 1, and this vector will be 1 by 10, so now our inner dimensions are both 1 and they match. Based on the rules of matrix multiplication, we will receive a 3 by 10 matrix. This means the resulting matrix has 30 elements, which contextually makes sense because we have 10 different heights and 3 different slopes, so we'll end up with 30 combinations of velocities. This is not a coincidence. Let's see if this works in MATLAB. Here's the equation without any transposes or dots as we just discussed. We actually do get an output, but we immediately know it's not correct because v is 1 by 3, not 3 by 10. We end up with an output because MATLAB actually has an alternative use for the slash key. This is why you need to be very careful when dividing vectors or matrices. MATLAB will happily give you an answer even though it's contextually incorrect. If you trace the code, you'll find that the result of this expression actually yields a scalar. And when we multiply this scalar by the term square root s over n, we end up with a 1 by 3 vector that we know is incorrect. Let's try adding the dots to just the second half of the term as discussed. But since the first term is 1 by 3, MATLAB will give us the error when we try to do matrix multiplication. We said we can alleviate this problem by transposing this term. 
you can transpose a matrix or vector by adding a single apostrophe. And now we get the desired 3 by 10 matrix. To recap, we need to use dot arithmetic here and here to compute this fractional term. But we need to transpose this term so the inner dimensions can match and we can matrix multiply these two terms. You might be wondering what each element physically represents. If you recall from the prompt, we have 10 different heights and 3 different slopes. Therefore, each row represents the velocity of the water at all of the different heights for one of the slopes. For example, the first value is the velocity of the water when h equals 0.1 meters and s equals 0.012. The next value is the velocity when h is increased to 0.2 meters and s is still 0.012 and so forth for the rest of the row. The element in the second row, first column, which is here, is the velocity when h equals 0.1 but now the slope is 0.015. This should make sense from both the context of the problem, but also from your knowledge of what actually happens during matrix multiplication. Part C tells us to plot V versus H for each of the three S values. It turns out that MATLAB is pretty smart. We can plot multiple sets of points if they share the same X or Y coordinates. In this case, each row of the V matrix shares the same H values so we can write the plot statement as if V is the same size as H. We can see that even though h and v are different sizes, MATLAB recognizes that v is just three vertically stacked sets of 1 by 10 vectors, so it plots each row as a separate line. I chose to increase the line width and make my markers triangles to improve visibility. Note that our legend utilizes the num2string function. As the name implies, the num2string function converts whatever it's given from a number to a string because MATLAB requires the text within the legend function to be a string or character vector. We have to transpose s because s by itself is 1 by 3, but we want a 3 by 1 vector. Try untransposing the s and see what happens. Finally, the last part of the problem asks us if our data and plot qualitatively make sense. We can see that for a given slope, the water velocity increases with height, which should agree with common sense even if you haven't formally taken a fluids class yet. We can also see that a larger slope produces a larger velocity, which also makes sense because of the influence of gravity. Even though we don't really know anything about the equation or its underlying physics, we can still analyze the trends from our plot and see if it agrees with common sense. This is a really important skill you should practice often. Students often wonder if their plot is right. You can perform these types of quick sanity checks to see if your answers contextually make sense. Admittedly, this takes practice, but I hope you'll gradually build your intuition of correctness even if you don't know the subject all that well. We'll be doing this a lot more throughout the course. To recap, we combined matrix and dot arithmetic to help us efficiently solve a problem. Before you dive right into coding, take some time to think about the nuances of the problem. Think about which variables are scalars and which variables are vectors. Think about what needs to be computed and if you need to use dot arithmetic matrix arithmetic, or both, to accomplish your goal. Going slow and steady yields more progress than rushing headfirst into the code without a clear plan or being cognizant of some of the subtleties within the problem. See you next time.